Hey guys! Now that you've seen my project update and some of the behind the scenes CAD work for all of the SolidWorks design that I've been doing for the 3BSM, I wanted to share a little bit more about this. The test frame that I've been using to perform some hovering flights, uh, take a look at how everything's worked together, and just generally test all of the subcomponents that I've built for this project so far. It is actually the same frame that you saw in those early videos. Uh, I have a hard time throwing things away, and in this particular instance it happened to work out in my favor. The first thing that I did was I went and I printed the new 3BSM version 3 design. Um, this was the same one that you saw in that recent CAD uh, time-lapse video. Uh, it's about a dozen or so parts, including all of the little gears, and I printed it over a day or two using my Prusa MK3S. Uh, from there, I went ahead and assembled it. It's mostly held together with fasteners, but there's some glue here and there. And there's also a lot of bearings around the inner perimeters of these ring gears, which is one big new addition from this version of the 3BSM that wasn't present on prior ones. Uh, I chose to go this route to reduce friction and make the segments a little bit easier to rotate, especially when under load when the fan and the nozzle are producing thrust. Once that was done, I printed some new mounting brackets, and I installed the fan and the new 3BSM onto the old hover test frame. I also mounted the new electronics board that I designed to hold the microcontroller and the motor drivers for the 3BSM, and I wired up the motors and the limit switches. Now let's go through the overall layout of the hover test frame. You can see I've got the front fan up at the front of the aircraft. Uh, the rear motor is back here and the 3BSM behind it. And the center of gravity between the two, which is right on this avionics tray here, is exactly in between the exhaust of the lift fan and the downward position of the 3BSM nozzle. That way each of the main fans is producing about the same amount of thrust when the vehicle is hovering and no one is under more load or less load than the other. In their center section here you can see the autopilot, the Maytech F765 wing. This is running ArduPilot firmware that I've gone and modified to add a frame class for this vehicle, but otherwise is pretty much stock. This is responsible for controlling each of the four motors, but it's also connected to the transition and the rudder signal inputs to the 3BSM control board connected to an FR Sky XAR receiver through both SBUS and also a telemetry port which gives me access to telemetry information on the screen of my transmitter. There's an M Robotics GPS that's used for functions needing position control like loiter flight mode and then later autonomous fixed wing flight. Finally there's a telemetry radio which I use to update parameters uh, make adjustments and just see telemetry in real time in Mission Planner on my laptop. Attached to the top of the 3BSM, you can see my control module, which is a custom PCB that houses a Teensy 2.0 and three motor drivers for the encoder motors that are on the duct. The code that I've written for the Teensy is responsible for taking the regular RC signals, the transition and the rudder, that the autopilot produces and translating those into motion of the duct segments. It's similar to what the internals of a servo might do, but it's got multiple inputs, it's got multiple outputs, and overall is more complex. It's also doing some things like precisely controlling the rotational rates of all three motors to keep the nozzle straight while it's transitioning from one position to another. And in the future, I plan to add things like feedback directly to the flight controller, uh, automatic calibration, and just things to make the whole system more robust. You can see the small gear motors fitted to the bottom of the duct segments. These are geared about 75 to 1, and then they're geared a further 10 to 1 between the motor's output shaft and the ring gears around the duct segments. The encoders at the back provide position feedback by counting 12 steps per resolution of the shaft of the motor itself which becomes very accurate considering the amount of gearing between that shaft and the actual 3BSM segments. This feedback is passed back to the microcontroller, which uses that to determine where each of the duct segments are. However, it's not absolute. It's only relative position feedback of when the motors are actually moving. 
So when the 3BSM powers up, it has to power up at a known position in order for any of that relative position feedback to make sense when it's in normal operation. For that, you can see these limit switches on top of the duct segments. Uh, now those were originally connected to these inputs on the control board, um, and, and the board would command the motors to run upon startup until all three of those limit switches are pushed. However, there's a lot of wiring there that would be moving around when the duct segments are moving, and if those broke over time, uh, they'd have to be repaired or else the nozzle wouldn't home properly and that would interfere with the rest of the movement. But what I found was these motor drivers can handle the stall current of these motors. So that means it's safe to just run them blindly into the stops. I don't have to shut them off when the limit switch gets pushed. And I just took out the wiring between those limit switches and the control board that was breaking all the time. So now after some code changes, uh, upon startup, the duct motors just run each segment into the stops for a few seconds. And after that, it just assumes that all of the segments are straight. Uh, it's not quite ideal from a technical perspective, but it's more reliable. And the approach that I think I'm going to take in the future is um, I'll have some current sensing on the drivers so that they can detect when the motors have reached their stops by looking at the spike in current without having to have physical switches and, and physical wiring. And I think that'll be um, the most robust, but also uh, a pretty elegant solution. Moving on to the sides of the test frame, you can see the big ESCs that are used to run the main and the lift fans. Uh, these are 100 amp hobby wing ESCs. Uh, they work fine. You can also see the much smaller T-motor ESCs that run the roll motors. Speaking of which, these are Emacs 1408 2300 kV motors. They've got two inch propellers and they're running on the same six cell 5500 milliamp hour flight pack that's powering the rest of the power system. They produce quite a bit of thrust, about 500 grams per side, and much more roll authority than the old servo and valve layout that was on my previous versions of this vehicle. I've also done a few tricks in the Argypilot firmware to make sure I'm getting the most roll authority out of these motors at any given time. As soon as they spool up above idle, they go right up to 50%, so they always have their full throttle range available for stabilization. At the middle of the frame, you can see the battery holders for the 6 cell 5500 pack. Uh, it's got two battery connectors because I originally thought I might be able to carry two packs and have 10 or 11,000 milliamp hours. Uh, but those were just a bit too heavy and, and I didn't really have quite the thrust I needed to fly that around. Um, however, the 5500 still buys me about three minutes of hovering flight, which is decent enough for testing, especially if I've got a handful of packs. Regardless of the number of batteries on board, one of the things I found that could improve thrust quite a bit was adding these printed inlet rings to the front of the fans. And that's because this vehicle, it, it spends most of its time hovering, it doesn't really move forwards, and it's difficult for static airflow to efficiently enter the, the sharp edge around the front of the ducted fans. So these bell mouth curved inlets smooth out the entry airflow, recover some losses, and I can see as much as 10 to 20% thrust gain just from having them on there. From this angle, you can more clearly see the bearings fitted to the version 3 3BSM design. These are mostly along the inside rings of these gears here, but also the yaw joint has an additional set of bearings fitted along the face between the static section and the rotating section. And that's because this joint is both under a bit more load during thrust uh, than the other two rings, and it's also the most critical that it move freely for yaw control. That's it for now, but keep an eye open. I've got lots of flight test footage and I'm editing it and I'll have that up on the channel shortly. Uh, if you'd like, you can go ahead and subscribe and you'll see when those go live. Thanks.